Okay, we are going to be doing 17.4 today in the notes. Alkenes and alkynes. So if you remember that special sheet that has all the different functional groups on it, these are the, top, the two at the top. So it just a, a little bit changes the things, changes things up a little bit in this one. So basically what we have is an unsaturated compound. Saturated means that um, if you think about it, if you're saturated, you're like completely soaking wet and like there's no dry spot on you. So in a saturated compound, they have as many hydrogens as they possibly can. So if you're an unsaturated compound, then you don't have all those hydrogens. And that happens through double and triple bonds. So you don't, if once you get a double and triple bond, you won't need as many hydrogens and you'll see why. Um, like look at ethene right here. Instead of a single bond like we saw in the alkanes, we now have a double bond. Well remember, carbon only needs four bonds because it has four valence electrons. So now it has one, two, three, four. It only needs two hydrogens. Whereas normally, if it's a single bond, it would have one, two, three, four. It would have three hydrogens. So this would be considered saturated. This ethene is considered unsaturated. All right, so um, alkynes are very similar in that they're unsaturated, but they're even more so unsaturated because they have a triple bond. So look at ethine right here. It's got a triple bond, so there's three, so four. It only needs that one hydrogen. So once again, saturated means it has as many hydrogens as it possibly can. Unsaturated means it only has a few or less than it normally does. All right, if you notice the names for your double bond, alkene, and this is ethene, alkynes, there's a triple bond, ethine. So you just look at the endings and you kind of just mimic that. All right, so from how chemistry names these alkane names, um, alkene names will change it to the E and E, alkyne will, or alkyne, sorry, alkyne will change it to the Y and E, like I just said. You look here at some of these where we have ethane, that's my alkane, a single bond. A double bond will be called an alkene, and it will end in e -E. My alkynes are a triple bond, it will end in y, y -E. So I have ethane, ethene, and ethine. You look down here, I have propane, propene, and propine. Now you'll see them sometimes write acetyl, and in fact, acetyl aldehyde is something we'll see a lot, but acet means F. Propyl, which propyl and prop sound a lot alike. Um, eth and ethylene sound a lot alike. We'll see like instead of meth, we'll see form. So instead of, um, oh gosh, when we see methanoic acid, we call that as formic acid a lot of times. But we'll look at those names later. All right. So guide to naming the alkenes and alkynes, it's very sim similar to what we've been doing. We're going to name that longest carbon chain first. Um, the longest one with a double and triple bond, so make sure you see that. We need the longest one that has that double or triple bond in there. Um, we're going to number the carbon chain starting from the end nearest the double or triple bond. So that's going to change things up a little bit. Anytime we see these special groups that we're going to be seeing in the next few chapters, we will name closest to that. No matter if there's another chain coming off closer, we're gonna name closest to that double bond or triple. And then you're gonna need the location and the name of each of the substituents or what I call the branches or chains coming off. All right, so let's look at this. We're gonna write the name for these. Now this first one's just a simple single chain here. I've got one, two, three, four, so it is butte. This tells me it's gonna be butene. Now I need to tell you where that, where that double bond is coming off. If I don't tell you, if I just say butene, we assume that it is one. All right, so if you don't, if, say it were here, that double bond in the middle and you just put butene, I'm gonna assume it's in the one and that would be wrong. So this could be butene or one butene. All right, number two is another simple one. It's similar to what we just saw up here. It's what I was just talking about. It's butte again. Now, this one I could not leave at butte, uh, one butene because it goes one, two, and that's how you number them, one, two, and you tell me the carbon beforehand. So you wouldn't go three butene. It is one, two, and then there's that double bond. So it is two butene. All right, now 
here we have a methyl branch, so let's look at it. We've still got one, two, three. Now I could go up and get that branch and say four, or I'm, I'm going to go easy and just go straight across. All right, so this is, once again, this is butene, and it is one, two, two butene. If you notice, it's going to be two either way, but it's two butene, and then one, two methyl. So I'm going to write two methyl, two butene. So in that case, there's nothing new. The only new thing is, is I'm ending it different, and I'm just telling you where that double bond is. All right, now here is one, two, three, four. It's four again, but look, there's a triple bond. So it is butyne this time. I still, you still need to tell me where that is, and it doesn't matter which way you count. You could go one, two, or you could go one, two. Either way, it's after that second carbon. So it is two butyne. And there is the answers. All right, we're going to write some more names here. So let's look at our carbon chain, our longest on A. Our first step is what is the longest carbon chain? So let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Five is pent. Now I'm going to say, okay, there's that triple bond, so it's going to be pent time. It's going to be Y and E. And I'm going to count, I'm one, two, three, or I could go one, two. I'm going to go quickest way to that triple bond, so I'm going to go two. I'm going to go one, two. And it is two pin time. All right, let's look at B. Let's count our longest chain. One, two, three, four, five. So it is pin. It is a double bond, so it is E and E, pin T. One, two, it is after carbon two. And then we also have one, two, three. On carbon three, there's a methyl group. So I'm going to write three methyl, two pentene. All right, I know I'm going through this a little bit quickly. So if there's something, if there's a question you have, just let me know. Write it down, and I'll get back to you. Um, or if you want me to check your work when you're doing that, let me know that too. Remember, the first worksheet's always participation. So if there's some mess ups or anything there, I'll let you know. All right, so that's all the practice for the naming that they'll do. I may do one here in a second with you that's maybe a little bit tougher. Um, but we have something now that I'll talk about with the class that's hydrogenation. So hydrogenation, it will actually, um, it will add, um, it takes away a double bond, basically. It, if, it, if you have a double or a triple bond, it breaks that down and uh, gives you more hydrogens, basically. Now, you can't just, it can't just do this on its own. It needs a catalyst, and a catalyst is something that helps it, helps the reaction get started. A lot of times it is platinum. Sometimes it will be nickel. But there's some little, like, oomph of energy that gets pushed in there to help this occur. So it is called hydrogenation because you are adding hydrogen. So look at this. What happens here is you're, you add a hydrogen with a little bit of this energy, that catalyst that's going to help it along. But you add hydrogen. What this hydrogen does is it comes in here because there's nowhere else for it to go. This is the only place that these hydrogens can go. It's going to kick out that double bond. Well, when it kicks out that double bond, this is what we have. We have carbon who wants four bonds. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Each carbon only has three. So when it kicks out that double bond, carbon's not happy anymore. So these two hydrogens, and I'm going to draw them in red, these two hydrogens will come here and make carbon stable and happy. So carbon stable because it has a full outer shell now. Hydrogen stable and happy now. So that is what's happening. You're basically, you're getting rid of a double bond, or you could get rid of a triple bond even, and you're adding hydrogens, hence the name hydrogenation. You're adding hydrogens. So basically, you're going from an unsaturated solution to a saturated molecule. So let's. So here are some products of hydrogenation. When you add hydrogen to vegetable oils, they produce compounds with higher melting points, margarine, soft margarines, shortenings, 
This is normally not good for us. When you do this, when you hydrogenate something and you add hydrogens, um, what you had before with the double bonds, you get like this, um, the, it kind of does this zigzag. And what happens is when it, it first off, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't solidify as easy. It stays in a liquid form in room temperature, which is good for us because we don't want that to solidify in our arteries. So it does that. But when you take away those double bonds, you get this just straight line. And what happens is that when you get these straight lines, they can solidify and they can pack down on each other. And then that's what can clog your arteries. So hydrogenation is really not that great for us um, as far as food goes. But anyways, that is hydrogenation. It's two, uh, one of the four reactions we'll see in this uh, chapter. We saw combustion, which I'll talk about that again here coming up just to refresh, and now hydrogenation. So we'll have a worksheet on those two. All right, let me check. Write an equation for the hydrogenation of one butene using a platinum catalyst. Well, I want to go back for a second. Look what they did. They drew this out. Now, we saw in combustion where it was better if we would have been like, oh, C2, H6 plus O2. We wrote it this way. Well, we want to draw this thing out. All right, so I'm going to draw out one butene. So butte is four. And it tells me on carbon one is where I have that double bond. I know that because it ends in E and E. So let me draw my hydrogens now. So I've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, each carbon has to have those four bonds. All right, now I'm going to add plus H2, and I'm going to use a catalyst. They say they use platinum. So there's my catalyst. Once again, it's just a helper. It helps get this, get this thing started. So what's going to happen is this hydrogen is going to come break that double bond there. So I'm going to draw this back out over here. And that double bond is now gone right here. It's just a single bond. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the original hydrogens I have. And then I'm going to draw my new hydrogens in black. So I got rid of a double bond there. And I now have these two hydrogens here to make up for losing that bond. All right, so now you went from butene to just butane. You can do this if you have a triple bond. It's just if you had a, if I had a triple bond here, instead of just plus H2, they will tell you it's plus two H2. So really you have four hydrogens so that when you, let's see here, I'm gonna three, draw my hydrogens real quick. So when you come and break up these bonds, you have four hydrogens to add and it makes everybody stable and happy. All right, and that is it. That's it for this chapter. So we'll have a worksheet. Like I said, that's participation. We'll have some practice worksheet after that that will be for points. Let me know if there's anything or any questions you have. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.